Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be looking at how to add model images to our transmitters. Right, so before I get started on this video, if any of you are thinking about doing YouTube and you get a new microphone, make sure you test it fully before recording a video. Anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, there's been a few people asking about this on uh, YouTube and sending me messages. So this sort of follows on nicely as well from the sounds video I did a few weeks ago. So what we're going to do is carry on in a similar vein to that video. It's going to cover both OpenTX and EFOS, and we're going to cover a few different aspects. So the first thing we're going to look at is if you don't want to create your own images, where can you get them from? Now, the easiest thing to do is just a web search for maybe transmitter images, radio control transmitter images, that sort of thing, and you'll get a, probably a few results come up. One that I use quite a lot is called Sky Raccoon, and they're pretty extensive. They have lots of planes on their quadcopters as well, gliders, all that sort of stuff. And they cover FreeSkyOS, EFOS, and OpenTX, which probably also includes EdgeTX. What I'll do is we'll go in and have a quick look at one of the models. So you can see on this home screen, there's loads of models available and you can search up here as well. So let's just click on this Edge 540 because it's here. So they usually give you a little bit of information about it. So it's, it's quite a handy website as well. But what we're interested in is icons. So you can see here the different icons it's got for the different transmitters. So this is our EFOS icon. We have one for OpenTX for the LCD screen type OpenTX transmitters. We have FreeSky OS if you're using an X10 or an X12. And we also have the older uh, black and white screen transmitter images. So this says X9, X9D, X9E but it'll probably work fine on a QX7, that sort of thing, maybe even a, an x Lite. I, I don't know, but this would probably be your best bet for finding those icons. So to download is simple enough, all we need to do is click on what we want. So what I'm gonna do is actually download uh, this one for EFOS, and I've created a little folder on my desktop here called transmitter icons, so you can obviously store them where you want on your computer, but just remember where they are for yeah, putting them on your radio. So you can see it's quite a random name. So what I'm gonna do is call this Edge540, and I'm gonna call this EFOS, because I'm also gonna download the OpenTX version as well. So file names can be a bit picky. Some are fine with longer file names, but I found with some OpenTX stuff, you need to be limited to how many characters. So what I'm gonna do is just click on this one here. I'll call it Edge 540. Let's try OTX for OpenTX, see if that works. And also I'm not using spaces or anything like that on this one. Just again, I've had problems in the past. So now we've downloaded our images, we could actually put them straight on the transmitter if we wanted to. But first what I'm going to do is show you how you can actually do your own images for the transmitter. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of this for a second and we'll just look at the two icons that I downloaded. Because what you obviously need to do is create the image to be the correct size for your transmitter. These both look very similar and the images from this one will work on this one and vice versa but they are different sizes, so they're not really optimized for that transmitter. You can already see that the OpenTX one is more a letterbox shape, so it's more like a widescreen format, whereas the EFOS uh, icon is almost square. So you can see I'm hovering over the images, and it's given me a dimension of 300 pixels by 280 pixels. And the uh, OpenTX for the color LCD screen type transmitters is 192 by 114 pixels. I'll put those sizes in the video description so you don't have to remember them. But what we want to do is we will need to know what size it is for creating our image. So where do you get these images from? Well, it's up to you. So for my transmitter, I want to use this image of my mini AR wing that I took. And yeah, why not? It's cute with its googly eyes. So why not use it? And then it's personalized to me. You can you know, take pictures of your own models on flight fields and you can do whatever you want with them. Now, just to be clear, in this tutorial, I'm not covering uh, image editing in an, any sort of advanced way. 
you can get so in depth with that like if you wanted to cut it out so it had an outline because on both ethos and these color lcd screen you can have a transparent background i'm also not going to be going into different image editing packages because to be honest if you use one you'll be using whatever you're used to if you don't there's yeah and you've no interest in paying you know stupid amounts of money each month for photoshop you're really stuck with either paint on windows um i don't know what paint package comes with a mac unfortunately but the good thing is there's a free one on the internet that we can just use and this is the site here it's called pixlr uh, so it's pixlr.com again i'll put the link in the video description and this site is free to use it's you, I think you can actually do quite a bit with it, to be honest, but we're just going to use it for a really simple resize and then a crop. So what I'm going to do is get my mini AR wing image and just drop it in and I'll make the screen bigger again. And the first thing that we need to do is resize our image. Now, the problem with this image is it is actually slightly wider than it is taller, but it's not in the same ratio as the uh, EFOS image. So I'm going to be losing a bit of image. So what we're going to do first, I believe it's this one. We go to resize image. And the way to find out is um, we're going to put in our 300. And if you remember, it was 300 by 280. So as it stands, it's going to shrink it down to 225, which means we'd have black bars top or bottom, which, you know, for this, I really don't want. It will look pretty crap, to be honest. I'd rather just lose a little bit of wing or something like that. But of course, if you can play with transparency, you could maybe fade to transparent and then it won't really matter. But because I want to keep the whole image, I'm going to have to change this to 280. And you'll notice now that the width will be slightly wider, meaning we need to crop it down. So I'll just apply that and then I'll find the crop tool and in here, you can see the height's already set to 280. So if I set the width to 300, that there is our image size for EFOS. Obviously, OpenTX is a slightly different size, so I might show that in a sec. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that over to here. So I'll lose this little bit of wing, but the rest of the image looks good. So we click Apply, and then we just save it. So what I'm going to do is it already says Mini AR Wing. Uh, I'm going to save it as a png file so i'm going to call this one uh, mini ar ethos and download so it's already given us the right name based on what we've put in and obviously we've just downloaded to our transmitter icons folder so i'm just going to save it in there so let's close that and what i'll do is i'll get rid of that image i'll close and what I'll do is I'll drag it in again and we'll go this time for the, the OpenTX sizes, which is 192 by 114. So we'll go back to our resize and then we'll try 192. And you can see this time the height is over so we can actually get the full width in and we'll just lose a bit of the height, which will actually look fine. So we'll apply that. Now there should be a zoom somewhere. Oh, just use your scroll bar. But you can see it's pixelated, but that's where it's so small. But for the crop, it might be helpful. So anyway, let's crop and rotate. We've got 192, so we'll put 114 in here. And you can see we've shrunk down. So we can either use rule of thirds and get that in the bottom half or bottom third. That would actually look quite nice. So we'll save that. This time we'll call it OTX. Again, I'm going to save it as a ping and we'll download it. And there we go, that's our images done. So now what we're going to do is put them onto the transmitters. Right, let's do OpenTX first. And what we need to do is obviously connect it up with our USB cable. So what we'll do, we'll power it on. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then what we need to do is obviously plug in our USB cable, depending on your transmitter is, you know, depends where it is. So clear all the messages before you plug the USB in. 
All right, there we go. Okay, so when you plug your USB cable in, you obviously get this message. We want to set this up to USB storage. Now that that's happened, we can go back to our computer and what we need to do is open up a file explorer. So the easiest thing to do is right click on it and go file explorer and we'll get a new one. I'm just going to drag that to the side, click on this one, then we get a nice half screen of both. So now what you need to do is find your um, SD card. So with me, I always rename my SD cards in the transmitter. So it's nice and easy to find. So this one is Horus X10 SD. So I know exactly what it is. We've got this other drive here, X10, which is the flash storage in there. If you want to rename your SD card, it's really easy. Just right click on the SD card and go to rename, type what you want in. So usually the transmitter name is handy and then um, that's it, press enter. So for OpenTX, where do we put the images? Well, unsurprisingly, there is an images folder. If you go in there, this is where we need to dump the images. So I'm going to choose the edge and the mini AR wing and I'm just going to drag them across. So you literally just click on them and hold the left mouse button down and drag them in then let go of the left mouse button. And that just copies them into the transmitter. We're all done. So let's head over to it. Right, so first things first, unplug the USB cable. So what we need to do is go into the model menu and then you'll see model image is the second menu option down. So click into that. Now what we should have is our Edge 540. So yep, that's worked fine with that link file name. So that's all good. And then if I go down to Mini AR Wing, so Mini AR OTX, and there we have our full color image. So that's all there is to it. You can get it onto OpenTX. You can do whatever you want with your images now. So now OpenTX is done. Let's do the same with Ethos. Right, so it is a similar process, but this time, instead of powering it on first, we need to put it into bootloader mode. So you hold down your enter button and you just press the power button and you can see up on the screen, we're in bootloader. The next thing we're gonna do is plug in the USB cable, which on this transmitter is in the top. So just stick it in. Windows would make all these annoying noises. And on the screen, you have USB plugged. Right, so we're gonna just do exactly the same as we did with OpenTX. We're gonna go into File Explorer. So yeah, just right click on there, File Explorer. You get a new one, drag it to the left of the screen and it will fill up half the screen. And again, what we need to do is wait for our SD cards to come live. So you can see here, as I mentioned with OpenTX, I renamed my SD card. So this one is called X20S SD. And if you want to do the same or similar, just right click on it and go to rename, call it what you want, and then press the enter button. What we need to do is go into the SD card. Now this time we have a folder called bitmaps. So if we go into there, we have another folder called user. So go into there. And this is where our model images live in EFOS. So we're just going to select um, our Edge 540 and our mini AR wing, and we'll just um, click with the left mouse button, drag it in, and then let go with the left mouse button. And that's it copied back to the transmitter. So what we do is unplug the USB cable, and then we just exit bootloader by just pressing the power button. Now, if we hold down the power button, we'll power up the transmitter so we can take a look at our images. So you can see I've already done this demo before, like I mentioned, microphone issues. <laughs> um, but anyway, we go into our model and then go to edit model. And if we go in here, first we'll look up the Edge 540. Right, so that file has not appeared. So that file name must be too long for EFOS. Let's have a look to see if our mini AR wing is here. So Mini AR EFOS is absolutely fine, but the Edge 540 isn't. So let's select that image. We'll come back out. And you can see it looks the same because I basically did the same tutorial twice. 
Right, so I thought I'd do a little bit of experimentation to see how many characters we can fit in. Edge 540 EOS is 10 characters. We have Dynam SBAC 342. I took the spaces out, that's 13 characters. Crosswind Min is 12 characters. So let's see which ones actually work. All right, again, I'm gonna unplug the USB, come out of bootloader, and let's power on the radio. See, this is fun experimentation. I mean, 10 characters we know is fine on OpenTX, so it may just be worth saying 10 characters is a good number anyway. So let's see what we've got. So we don't have the Crosswind Mini with 12 characters. We don't have the Dynam, but we do have Edge 540 e, well, EOS and the image is showing up absolutely fine. Right, so there we go, I've learned something today. We have a number four characters in our transmitter images. So let's wrap this video up. What we've done today is we've learned where we can download images from, and where we can search for different websites to download our images from. We've learned how to take our own images, resize them for the transmitter, and then we've also learned how to copy the images to the transmitters for both OpenTX and EFOS. We've also learned that there's a 10 character limit. So if you want your images to show up, you've got to have the names be 10 characters or less. Otherwise, they won't show up in your list. So there we go. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and I hope this has been useful for you. If it was, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon to get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too. Thank you very much for watching guys. Fly your models like you stole them and have a great time. See ya.